Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and I want y'all to meet the Bonafide P127 right there. I owe a big thank you to Big Adventures for sponsoring the channel with this kayak absolutely free of charge. So full disclosure, I did not pay for this with my own money. However, I am not required to give praise and sing all kinds of goodness for this kayak if it doesn't deserve it. So I also want to tell each and every one of you thank you because you watch the uh, videos and all of y'all that engage with the content whether it's going to be youtube instagram facebook any comments that you make on my content any thumbs up thumbs down everything all of those views help the fishing industry to notice the channel and then we get to take advantage of items like this so here we go the bonafide p127 i don't know much about it and it's not that i'm trying to be like a know-it-all i'm just going to give you all it straight as i know it and have read about it like briefly so this is sort of a an unboxing video so to say um this is uh, 12 foot seven inches long hence p127 the p stands for pedal drive which we have right over there and it appears that these companies also are using the same drive i don't know if it's interchangeable but uh, you got native watercraft liquid logic bonafide and hurricane uh, the pedal drive i have not taken a look at it i have seen it at the houston fishing show and uh, it looks pretty pretty decent um, the only other pedal drive that I'm used to is from a competitor company and those ones were built solid like a tank. So I'm looking forward to seeing what this one is about. We also have a sidekick wheel system right here by Bonafide. Now the, what I do know about this particular style of wheels from a competitive company is that it would wreak havoc on the plastic whenever you would drill. It was like a big time stress point. And the more gear you load down on your kayak, the more it had a tendency to start giving like stress fractures and then cracks and stuff like that. Um, but this right here, if you take a look at that, it looks like it's gonna work on the gear tracks, which these gear tracks will spread load all of that weight throughout. So. Um, we'll see how that's going to work. And just for the sake of, I do not like this. I'm going to go ahead and say that first and foremost, I think it's an eyesore, uh, having your wheels on the kayak the entire time. Uh, it may be something that a lot of y'all ha have found convenient whenever it comes time to like launch and recover. I don't like it though. Um, I, I don't like things that are going to snag and so anything that i can remove that presents itself as a snag i probably will do that but uh, that's what we got right there uh, you also have the seat which let's get the tape measure really quick because i want you all to see the difference between this and a competitor seat from that seat frame all the way to this one it's about 22 and a half inches um, that's right where your thighs are going to be. And then the seat back, it's uh, open down here. Not too sure how I'm going to like that. But uh, the competitor seat that I'm currently using, yeah. So if you take a look at this, it's actually like 21 inches right there. So for those of you that have a bigger body frame, you're probably going to like that. Um, the kayak itself, I know to be 34 inches wide, I believe it's a hundred pounds the way it is right now, minus all the, like the seat and the pedal drive. You have a hatch that opens up both ways, which is kind of neat, uh, depending on where you're trying to access. Like if you're up here at the bow, you just basically lift it up and you've got hinges down there. Uh, you got a tray, looks like a plug, a scupper plug, and then access to the internal of the kayak. But uh, yeah, so there we go. I'm just trying to show that you can 
open it up from this side as well. I'm, I'm very curious to see, like, okay, so there's a gasket. Um, let's open it up from the other end. You got this seal right here, so kind of come up right there in the process. It's got some sticky stuff. Maybe I can pop it up and then place it back down. But um, yeah, you got that gasket that goes all the way around the hatch. Hopefully that's gonna get the job done and not let water down below deck. And let's see, right up here at the bow, you have your grab handle. It's a fixed one. Um, we'll see how this is gonna like work whenever you're carrying it with a buddy as you go fishing. You also have a mounting plate up here. I don't know if it's actually reinforced down below, but let's find out. Because one would say trolling motor. That's what I would think you're gonna use this for. Power pole possibly. I. I probably wouldn't put a power pole up there, but yeah, let's see if it's reinforced down below. All right, so you can see that it is not reinforced. It's just basically the plastic itself. Um, it may be, looking at it, I cannot tell if the thickness of the plastic is going to be a lot thicker than the rest of the hole, but... For the screws, they're just basically anchored into that little nipple that's down there. So um, who knows if the plastic is going to be thick enough to handle all the torque that a trolling motor, whatever you're going to decide to go with, if that's your cup of tea. You don't know how that's going to be able to handle it. Uh, moving on over here, it's kind of uh, you know intuitive to have like a rod holder. However, I would not do that in the salt. Um, lay my rods right here to windy hole slap everything that's going to come splash on the side of the kayak is going to come over and it's going to get your reels wet and that's just something that's unneeded for the salt but uh, that's just me being tedious this right here is how you're going to lock your pedal drive in i'm going to say whenever it's in the down position you got these little keys probably yeah probably gonna want to take some thick braided line or maybe some parachute cord uh, put a lanyard and then back one of these screws like off make a loop knot put that right there back it back down and then you'll have a lanyard to hold these in place so that you don't lose them right there but uh, yeah just it's very simple three keys to lock that down uh, one of the biggest things made in America. So this is a proudly made US product. And uh, like a lot of the other big time competitors, uh, all of their stuff is made here as well. Uh, we go further down. This looks like a pod of some sort, or maybe it's just a tray. It's actually a tray. And then it opens up down to the bottom. I will uh, pull the pedal drive out here in a second. I just wanna get through the kayak at first. And then uh, take a look at the cockpit. Wide open design. I use a stakeout pole, which is right here. This is a four foot long fiberglass rod. And um, I use this, I carry it. And rather than buy a power pole, which this is a power pole, by the way, a lot of y'all have asked like, hey, what is this, the stakeout pole that you use? It's a heavy duty micro spike from power pole cut in half and then sharpened down there. Um, some duct tape and it works just fine to go through a scupper hole uh, at a moment's notice and it, it basically anchors the kayak. Now on the competitor kayak the scuppers are right here on the seat and it makes it a nuisance to try to stake yourself out. It throws off the balance and everything but because this one has scupper holes right there and right there. Uh, I have my choice of four, depending on which way I want the kayak to face, and I can stick this right in. Now, most manufacturers are gonna say, please do not use the scuppers. You're gonna void your warranty if you develop a crack there, and heed their warning, because if you spend 
I believe the MSRP on this is like $29.99, uh, close to $3,000. If you develop a crack, then that's gonna be bad. And uh, you don't wanna void your warranty. Uh, it comes with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight scupper plugs. And there you go. Just something like that, very simple. A lot of people say like, well, it's not a dry ride on some of the other kayaks that I've used. Kayak fishing, you're gonna get wet, man. I mean, I even got a shirt. If y'all go down to the video description and take a look at the merch that I have at Teespring, I got a shirt that says kayak fishing gets your girl wet. <laughs> um, you're gonna get wet. Your feet will get wet, so just prepare yourselves for that. If you want a dry ride, then maybe get on a full-size skiff, a John boat, something like that. Kayak fishing may not be your cup of tea. But um, yeah, so you got all of that. We have gear tracks over here on the port side. You also got them on the starboard side right over there. I believe this might be for the rudder right there to deploy it and then um, stow it. I, I'm thinking. I don't see anything else that would be for yeah that's got to be for the rudder this is your rudder control right here uh, I'm not too sure how durable that's gonna be but at first sight it looks like it could be a little bit beefier we'll see how that plays out so yes gear tracks probably let's see how long those are let me grab the tape measure 16 inch tracks and then these are actual legit gear tracks over here, which is again, another 16 inches. It looks like they hooked us up with, I'm not sure if this is gonna be standard on the kayak or not. No, this is a yak attack. And then a paddle holder, you got two of them. For those of you that are gonna break your paddle in half, cause you don't want it like the length of the kayak, which I like this idea because I hate carrying a paddle with me because it just gets in the way. Um, now that it doesn't have to be on the side of the kayak, you can just break it in half and put it right here. This looks like for like the uh, Visicarbon Pro that I use, my light, the safety light, can go right into that gear track. And you got one on each side. You also have a bungee system back here for a crate, which I do have a crate that I always take out with me. And uh, later on, we'll introduce that to the kayak to have some of the creature comforts that I'm used to being able to take advantage of whenever I go out there on the water for my style of fishing. Two flush mount rod holders. This looks like a hole access for maybe the wiring or the, yeah, for the rudder. And then this is definitely the rudder right there and you also have like a shallow water anchoring system pattern right there very familiar with that um, or you can probably put a trolling motor back here that's uh, all the rage a pop-up handle you can just pop that right up and then down here you have the rudder in the stow position and uh, it looks like a pretty big one. We'll see what the turning radius is gonna be like whenever we get out there on the water. Uh, you also have, oh, that's what that little scupper plug down below the bow hatch is for right here, I bet. That looks to be for a fish finder. If you're, you know, your transducer is gonna go down in here. Let's lift this bad boy up and see what kind of, okay, so you got a mounting plate right there and it looks like starboard, something like that, where you can drill your holes in and then just mount. And then there's the hole right there for your actual transducer wire. Taking a look at the hole design here, let's kind of back away so that y'all can get a good look at it. it. It appears like you got a pontoon right there on that side and then a pontoon down there and almost like a keel that acts as a skeg all the way back there to help control you being able to like track straight. So that's pretty cool. So hopefully uh, whenever we're not pedaling, we're gonna be able to track straight. And the design up here at the bow, so this is, um, 
yeah, we'll see how that's going to act. What I'm scared of is when the water gets choppy, as it hits right here, I'm scared of a hole slap coming up here and then just splashing on this little lip right here. And it looks like maybe about three to four inches of a lip from where the bow is and it's gonna slice through the water. So that's a good design to slice through the water. I mean, I'm talking just by looks. This is nothing scientific. So for those of y'all that are geeking out, you know, like, oh dude, whatever, this and that, <laughs> bear with me. We will get on the water. I'm just giving my first impressions. I'm allowed to do that. Uh, but yeah, that's the design of the bottom for those of you that have never been able to see one up close, but you were curious. Another thing that I noticed, which back here, you have skid plates that are replaceable. Um, if you get in a hurry and you need to move this and you forgot your cart, well, that's the sacrificial skid plate right there. You got one on each side. Um, trust me, <laughs> I use these a lot. Taking a look at the seat a little bit closer, I noticed that you have these little, that, that might be a brass grommet that receives this little screw right there, that bolt. From this angle, you can see this honeycomb mesh that's gonna be breathable. Hot Texas summers, that's gonna be your best friend. Um, so having that right up on the small of your back is gonna work wonders. And then this right here is a little of the same and uh, there's no explanation needed for why you want that, whether you're a man or a woman out there trying to enjoy the water. Um, so everything else seems to be in order. You got some buckles to be able to take that off. Also proudly made in the USA. Love that tag, love seeing it. And then back here, let's see. So they went the extra yard to make sure that the comfort was gonna be there. So you got some buckles to help cinch it down depending on, I'm thinking like lumbar support maybe, tighter, uh, more support, looser, well then you're gonna kick back. And then this right here is to control how much you're gonna recline back. The seat does have a tendency to get a little squirrely on you because it's only got these two points. There is not a second, I mean a, a, a third and fourth one to keep it completely aligned. So um, yeah, that's just an observation, that's all. It's not a criticism. I recommend actually scanning this right here, watching the YouTube video that they have and making sure that you do this the correct way. So right here we've got the left, this one's the right, that's gonna go to the other side. And I'm just gonna attach this right here. It's it's, it's an actual square hole right there. So there's only two ways to put it on and that's the right way, the wrong way. So you just basically line that square up. There we are on that side and then you wanna go the complete opposite direction with the other pedal. So one is straight up, the other is straight down. I want to see how much clearance is going to be required before you have to just stow the actual pedal drive because that's that's the biggest Achilles heel for all these prop drives. Um, whenever you take them out into some very shallow water, you're going to find that you really don't get to use them much when you're in the marsh. That's the advantage of the competitors who use a different style drive. So just looking at that, yeah, it's gonna be approximately 10 inches right there. So y'all can see that. The beauty of these propeller drives, especially for you bass fishermen, maybe some open water salt guys, um, that's not gonna be going into the marshlands and stuff like that, where you gotta worry about oyster and then mud, very shallow water. Uh, you have instant reverse. So you're going forward, but then you go reverse instantly. So if you're fishing structure, you can kind of hold your place and maneuver your rudder at the same time. 
to uh, hold your position if you're in current or if you're fighting a big old dock monster and you need to back up and pull them away, then you can do that. The downside to a prop drive is the fact that when you stop pedaling, uh, I do like the design of this one because look at the surface area right there. Here, let's get the tape measured. Not all pop, prop drives are created equal uh, now that I'm looking at this one right here. So maybe it's not gonna play that much of a role in heartache and discontent whenever you're out there. But that is approximately one and three quarters of an inch, that blade right there. Whenever you stop pedaling, the surface area right here acts as instant drag. So as the kayak is moving forward, this blade, if it's not moving to help propel you through the water, water is now hitting that. And it's like, think of a piece of plywood or a board in the water. The minute you put it in there and you're moving forward, it's gonna instantly stop you. So it's not very energy efficient. You're not gonna glide through the water per se. That's gonna do it, y'all. So uh, that's the Bonafide P127. We still have one more thing to take care of, but I'm saving that for the next video. I don't feel like putting the cart on right now. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. There's gonna be a lot more content to come. I'm gonna put this kayak through its paces as it pertains to the upper Texas Gulf Coast, mainly the shallow water marshes. I We do have jetty systems that I can fish this kayak from depending on how stable it's going to be to go after some big game that migrates through and right now is the perfect time to head out there and do some of that stuff. Um, so a lot of content is going to be coming. I'm a full-time YouTuber for those of you that are new to the channel and you're watching this just specifically for this kayak. Hit the subscribe button. Also ring the notification bell icon so that YouTube will let you know whenever I drop new videos. I try my best to publish three of them every week. So you can look forward to seeing this bad boy in action whenever we get out there on the water. If you enjoyed it, click that thumbs up button. And until next time, tight lines, y'all.